Rhett Lashley is a head coach that Florida State football fans should get to know. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. I truly appreciate you stopping in to talk some Knowles with me. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Rhett Lashley. This is going to be the first in an installment of coaches I'm going to talk about, head coaches, and probably some assistants as well. The coaching carousel is a violent one each and every year. This will be much the same. I want to give people a perspective of what goes on behind the scenes throughout this. I've even got a new tab on the YouTube page talking about coaches. If you scroll down, you'll find it. It'll be added to at least a few times a week because, again, it's not just about Florida State, but every coaching move impacts the Knowles. Because either you're coaching against them or you had a chance to get them and then somebody else got them. It is complex. So without further ado, this is my take on Rhett Lashley, the quarterback coach turned offense coordinator, turned now head coach at SMU in year three. He is 26 and 10 with the Mustangs. And he's, again, 41 years old, pretty young guy. Let's start off with the positives of being young. And he's coached at Miami. He was the OC there for a short time. He knows Florida a little bit. He's recruited in Texas and Florida. Very important. Being 41 years old, he's going to be able to relate to some of the younger players, not only on the roster, but the prospects coming up through the prep ranks. That is also very, very important. This is a guy, though, just in year three. You can't point to him and say, well, he's been through turmoil or in, let's just say, a single year. Not one, but both of his coordinators took other jobs. How does he react? We don't know. We don't know after success and you just see everybody coming for your guys. How do you replenish the cover with assistance? That's a huge factor in this game. There was nobody better at it than Nick Saban, and it's why he's got seven rings. It's also why he's called the GOAT. I'm not saying Lashley's headed in that direction, but I'm guessing that most people understand money to get the assistance for the administration is just the first step. You have to be able to convince guys to pick up their family and move, oftentimes with kids to come there. That's something we're going to have to find out about. And again, he's fascinating to me, but it's more about on the field that I like. So let's delve into that. And let's use Kevin Jennings as the primary. Rhett played quarterback at Springdale High School under Malzahn. He went to Arkansas and played for three years for his career. Then he became a GA at Arkansas. He ended up going and coaching with Malzahn at Auburn. He ended up at UConn. He ended up back at Auburn. He ended up at Miami as the OC. He ended up at... uh, SMU is an OC. He now is the head coach. He's been around different guys, but he's always been a quarterback coach and or the coordinator. This is a guy that knows how to score. And here's an interesting point. As we all know, Florida State is in the midst of a quarterback battle with two young quarterbacks, and it takes time. But it is ironic that at SMU, Kevin Jennings, who Florida State played early this year, is a redshirt sophomore that didn't have a ton of experience coming into this year. And now he's started six games and played in all the games the Mustangs have. And his numbers and the way he plays, his moxie, it's like he's a fifth-year senior in year four of being a starter. Here are Kevin's numbers. And keep in mind, this was a lowly rated recruit. He was barely a three-star on 24-7. In fact, he was a 249th recruit just in Texas. So this was not a guy that was handpicked by an elite program. He was a guy they got and they've developed. So Lashley and his staff deserve a lot of credit. This year, Jennings is 127 of 196, 64.8%, 1,900 yards exactly, 9.7 yards per attempt, 12 touchdowns, five picks. Again, six starts only. He's doing pretty good. And more importantly, how much are you a clutch football player behind center? Third down passing, 36 of 51, 70.6%. 437 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, 24 first downs. He's really good. The additional part, Lashley's turning loose in the RPO game, and he's thrived. 
This is a young man that when he takes off, he has 68 carries, 317 yards, 4.7 per, and three scores. He will take off if you lose contain. Florida State certainly did that against him. And he's capable of design runs and RPOs killing you. Not just pitching it and catching it. He's an all-around quarterback that fits, quite honestly, what Norvell's scheme would do. But they have just taken it to a whole nother level. This is like Jordan Travis on steroids because it took him so long to develop. This kid, I think, next year could win the Heisman. It's amazing. Again, he was barely a three-star recruit out of high school. Great story. And last week, deserves a lot of credit. When we come back, we're going to talk about the defense and some of the obstacles that hiring a guy like Rhett Lashley presents, whether it's Florida State or another school. That's next here on Locked On Seminoles. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sports app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the National Football League. One of my biggest concerns with guys, that, as like I defined with Lashley, that's a quarterback coach, truly offensive-minded, always been on that side of the ball. How do they practice? How do they hire their defensive staff? How do they coach in games to give their defense a chance to truly be an elite-level squad? Many quarterback coaches are too soft in practice, like a certain guy that's at University of Southern California, and that's why they fade every year and lose close games, get beat at the line of scrimmage, and are overrated. But, Lashley, that's not been the case with SMU, and especially this year. It was shocking to me. I knew they were pretty good on D from seeing them play against Florida State, but I did not know that they were fifth in the nation in rushing D, giving up 90 yards per contest. Again, he's a quarterback coach and offensive coordinator by trade. This is rare air. That gives me... A lot of faith that long-term, I'm not saying it's going to be for Florida State, but that Lashley could end up being an elite coach somewhere. Not just at SMU. He could be in the NFL being a guy. Maybe he's the next head coach at some other program if it's not Florida State. But, I mean, maybe he just takes SMU and stays there forever. I don't know. But there's a lot of reason to believe that he is in a position to be great. Here are a couple of the other stats for SMU's defense just to place things into perspective about him. Number one. Total defense, pretty solid for a team that recruits at the level SMU does, 341 yards a game. That's 45th in the nation. Pass defense, this is the one area it's a little concerning. But again, because they're so good against the run, this is probably inflated. More teams try to throw it. 251 a game, that's 108th. Plus SMU, they're 8-1. and one. Teams are usually behind against them. they got to throw. Finally, scoring D, 21.8. That's 39th. Pretty good. They're not a team that I'm – sitting here looking at going, this this seems similar to some of these other schools that have these passing gurus, but they're always in 35-31 games. Just because you can throw the ball doesn't mean you can stop the other team from throwing it and running it. SMU is a rare example of a head coach that's figured it out, not only on offense, not only in the impressive numbers with Kevin Jennings, and I'll add a few more here in a moment on Kevin, but he's given his defensive staff a chance. It also means he's hired some pretty good assistants in the players. Not only believe in Lashley, but the assistants. There's buy-in. This could be a sleeping giant here at SMU. Maybe this isn't a one-year deal. Again, Jennings could be a Heisman run, front runner next year. Why not? He's really talented, and he's got more eligibility left with Lashley there. So here's a couple other stats that I find interesting about Jennings that should keep you interested in what he's able to do. It's hard to get young players as, again, Florida State's quarterbacks, <laughs> let's be honest, they're not good in the pocket with being pressured, knowing when that clock's run out. SMU just played Pittsburgh. They, they blitz. 
They're really good up front. Their D-line coach is tremendous. They put a lot of pressure on people. Don't believe me? Go look at the SCU – or, excuse me, the Syracuse game. They just destroyed Syracuse, had three pick sixes in the first half. That that a whole offensive unit will see it goes. Well, they got after it being SMU, but they only got one sack. Why? Kevin recognized it. Screen game was good. They protected better. They were prepared, well coached. And Kevin's clock was sped up. He understood he had to get rid of it. According to PFF, he had 2.41 seconds to get rid of the football. That's terrible. And they were still successful. He was 17 to 26, 65.4%, 306, 11.8 yards per attempt. Elite number. That's that is Heisman Trophy kind of number. Two touchdowns, no picks. They destroyed Pittsburgh. This is a first-year starter. They did not even start the first three contests for the Mustangs. They have coached him up, and he has taken it to a level that we did not anticipate. Maybe they did inside the program, but nobody really knew who Kevin was outside of the greater Dallas area is my guess. Really, really impressive stuff. So I think, again, they're pretty good. And they just go back to the other side of the ball again for fun. They've created 19 turnovers this year. By the way, Florida State's created three. Horrible. He finds ways, man. His entire staff is bought in. I think you're looking at a great young coach. Maybe he stays at SMU. Maybe Florida State makes a run. But I guarantee you, Rhett Lashley will have overtures from other programs because he's doing it on both sides of the ball, and he's 41. This is one of the guys that I'm highest on in what I consider to be in 2024 as we get ready for the coaching carousel in December, a rather paltry year. He could be one of the hottest names, regardless of his age, regardless of his head coaching experience, because quick, name the elite coach at a program that could be on his way out, but has all the pedigree with 10 year, like 10 plus years, been in the playoff or been on a title run like he's one of Saban's former assistants that isn't with a bunch of skeletons. Like I, I could obviously talk about Lane Kiffin. There's not really a reason to do a pod on Lane right now. I don't think Florida State would be interested. And Lane, allegedly, Florida's after him. Who knows what's going on there? But besides Lane, like, and that's pushing it. Who's the guy? Who are you going to hire? It would be really, really hard for me to see it. I just, I don't. Um, I'll talk about Golish and some other guys coming up. Alex Golish is somebody several people have asked me about. He's the head coach at USF. I'll get to him soon enough. But I don't think he's as good a candidate right now just from what little I've read about him. I need to research more. And again, I'm very high on Rhett Lashley. I think he deserves his credit. This is a coach that's going to make a lot of money in this profession, college and possibly even the pros. Make sure you check out Locked on Seminoles each and every day. I appreciate all you that have already subscribed. Hit that notification bell and share this pod. And if you haven't, please do. I appreciate that very much. And I will see you again all throughout the week. There's a chance for multiple podcasts on Locked on Seminoles all week. It's Notre Dame week, and it's also a chance to talk about several more coaches. So make sure you come back and see you soon at Locked on Seminoles.